The prophecy of Ezra's eagle is found in the second book of Esdras, chapters 11 and 12. Esdras is part of the Apocrypha, a collection of 14 books included in the Bible between the Old and New Testaments from 1611 until the early 20th century. The Church of England removed these books due to historical inaccuracies. Esdras is the Greek translation for the name Ezra, who was a prophet of the Old Testament and contemporary of Daniel. There are many prophecies in the books of Esdras, but Ezra's eagle prophecy is perhaps the most famous. The prophecy is believed to have been given around 530 BC, though the exact date and author are debated by scholars. Many think it relates to the Roman Empire, but the prophecy also hints at a future kingdom. The prophecy starts with a giant three-headed eagle emerging from the sea, its wings spreading around the world. The eagle's right wing had 14 feathers, 12 long and 2 short, while the left wing had only 6 short feathers. Ezra's angelic guide explains that the feathers represent leaders who rule this nation one after another. The shorter feathers symbolize leaders whose time in power is cut short by unnatural events. The first clue found in the prophecy that links it to America is found in chapter 11 verses 16 and 17. Hear thou that hast borne rule over the earth so long. This I say unto thee, before thou beginnest to appear no more, there shall none after thee attain unto thy time, neither unto the half thereof. In other words, the scripture is referring to a leader who will reign twice as long as any other leader or feather before or after him. There is only one leader in American history who fits this description, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Roosevelt served four terms as president and passed away naturally during his final term. Shortly thereafter, Congress ratified the 22nd Amendment, limiting all future presidents to two terms maximum. Roosevelt is described as the second feather on the eagle's right wing, with Herbert Hoover as the first and Barack Obama as the last of the 14 feathers. The long feathers represent leaders controlled by the three eagle heads, which are literal and symbolic representations of evil in high places. These heads are often referred to as the deep state, shadow government, cabal, or secret combinations. Ezra's angelic guide tells him that the two short feathers on the right wing represent rulers whose time in office was cut short by unexpected or nefarious events. Between Herbert Hoover and Barack Obama, there have been two such leaders. John F. Kennedy, who was assassinated in his first term, and Richard Nixon, who had to resign during his second term. This amazing connection, revealed well over 2,000 years ago, should make truth-seekers carefully consider the rest of Ezra's vision. The vision also notes that the second short feather, representing Richard Nixon, falls right in the middle of the timeline. When we look at the order of rulers on the eagle's right wing, Nixon is indeed in the middle. This raises the question, why start with Herbert Hoover? To answer why Herbert Hoover is the starting point, we need to look at his role as a founding member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Gary Allen's book, None Dare Call It a Conspiracy, links this council to the rise of the American deep state. So, Ezra's vision isn't just about US presidents, but about the rise of global elites and their threat to the world. Further evidence will show that Ezra's vision aligns with the description of a powerful secret organization called the Whore of Babylon in Revelation chapter 17. Next, let's look at the six short feathers on the eagle's left side. The first of these short-feathered presidents is Donald J. Trump. The 2,500-year-old prophecy suggests that Trump's time in office would have been cut short by the actions of the global elitist group, also known as the Whore of Babylon. This leads us to the 2020 presidential election, one of the most disputed in modern US history. Many Americans believe the election was stolen due to interference from the deep state. Over 10% of states sent alternate delegates to the Electoral College, claiming widespread fraud. Regardless of your view, nothing like this has happened in America before. The prophecy suggests that Joe Biden, the next short feather, would be out of office sooner than Trump. It also predicts that the next two short feathers would try to be set up as rulers, but would be destroyed by the three eagle heads before they take power. Ezra then saw that the last two small feathers moved under the rightmost head of the eagle. Let's break this down. On July 21st, 2024, Joe Biden had to suspend his presidential campaign, despite wanting to continue. The exact reasons for this are unclear. On the morning of the announcement, his team was still saying they were committed, 
But then, everything suddenly ended. Since then, Biden has been largely absent, and he has reluctantly handed over the campaign to VP Kamala Harris, who is one of the most unpopular vice presidents in US history. According to the prophecy, both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are thinking about being set up as rulers, while Joe Biden has been sidelined by secretive elitists. If the prophecy is accurate, these elitists won't stay hidden for long. It predicts that before Trump or Harris can be set up, they will be destroyed by the three eagle heads. The last two short feathers in the prophecy move to just below the rightmost eagle head. According to the prophecy, the middle head, the most powerful of the three, takes control and rules with greater oppression than any leader before. The prophecy says that the most powerful of the three eagle heads will then die a painful death in his bed, though the cause is unknown. After his death, the stigma around his rise fades and the leftmost eagle head takes over global control. The prophecy then says that the rightmost eagle head kills the left head to take control, but also meets a suspicious end. At this point, only two small feathers are left under the rightmost head. They take over and plunge the world into major chaos. One possibility for identifying one of the remaining short feathers comes from Daniel chapter 7. Daniel describes a terrible king who will come during the time of the fourth beast, or the Whore of Babylon. This king will rise to power by removing three of the top leaders in a group of ten, then wage war against God's people and overcome them. He will also speak blasphemies against the Most High. Revelation 13 describes another version of the end times Antichrist. This figure will speak blasphemies, wage war against God's people and defeat them. He will perform amazing miracles that astonish all nations and have control over the earth alongside the beast. I believe the last two feathers of Ezra's eagle represent the short but intense global rule of the Antichrist and the beast. This will be the darkest period the world has ever experienced. Of those days we read in Matthew chapter 24 starting in verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye, that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. These will truly be the darkest of days. During these dark times, the Lord's promise to his people will be fulfilled. The vision then shows a powerful lion emerging from the wilderness. This lion is too strong for the Antichrist and the beast. It cleanses the Americas of all wickedness and is a precursor to the second coming of Jesus Christ. After his resurrection, when Christ visited the Americas, he spoke about the lion. In the Book of Mormon, in the Book of 3rd Nephi, chapter 21, verse 12, we read, And my people who are a remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles, yea, in the midst of them, as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver. In this passage, the Saviour calls the lion a remnant of Jacob. This remnant is so powerful that it overcomes the strongest nation on earth. So, who are the remnant of Jacob? They are the lost ten tribes of Israel, who disappeared after the Assyrian conquest of Israel 2,700 years ago. Now, in our time of greatest need, the lost ten tribes return as a lion with great power to cleanse the land. Their return will be even more incredible than the Jewish exodus from Egypt. As Jeremiah says, Therefore behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. The lost ten tribes, or the remnant of Jacob, will be a sword of justice in the Lord's hand. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle-axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. If the interpretation of Ezra's vision is accurate, 
we are approaching a time when the world will fall into darkness. Thankfully, this darkness will be brief and the Lord's power will soon be revealed. Now is the time to learn about the great promises and covenants the Lord has made with the house of Israel. Gathering and restoring the house of Israel is the most important work on earth today, and it will be accomplished by the power of Almighty God. As the prophet of God, Russell M. Nelson has said, But my dear brothers and sisters, so many wonderful things are ahead. In coming, In coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. Brothers and sisters, now is the time for you and for me to prepare for the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ.